Hello YouTube, hello fellow crafters. This is Lan Vader again uh, at the crafting table for another little uh, quick vid. Uh, today is going to be a crafting vid. Uh, so I'm, we're going to be working on uh, LED uh, lights for a uh, tabletop RPG. So this is my forge. I'll show you how to uh, to use paints and, uh, and sand to give this um, embers effect. And this one is uh, interesting. Because you can lift the top off this way, up, and there you go. Okay, so you can turn it on and off by opening it. So you've got this uh, nice uh, corner with a flickering flame. Basically, what you need is that it's a uh, tea light. You need a flickering tea light. So you can buy them. Uh, I won't say in bulk, but. Uh, at least by six, pack of six, sometimes more. You can find some at your duty store, I'm sure. Uh, you need to take th care of uh, several things, though. Uh, the main, most important thing of all is that it's got to be uh, thinner possible, because some of them are a little higher. So really try to get the thinner you can find. It mustn't be very high. You're going to see why afterwards. Uh, and also, you're going to make sure it's uh, flickering. Okay, yeah, just to uh, to actually imitate the flame, a flickering flame. Uh, these two are a bit more original, uh, that being a, an actual fireplace. And that's that's going to be the objective of uh, today's build. I'm going to do another fireplace, but a bigger one, using uh, two LEDs. It's going to look a little bit like this, except I'm going to do it a lot bigger. One of those big fireplaces you had uh, during the Middle Ages for uh, cooking. So let's get to the craft. Can remove the flame right there. I'm gonna reuse those because they're transparent. They look like alchemy flasks. Then we can crack the tea light open. So we're gonna keep only the essential, the LED, the battery, the switch, all the connectics, but we're gonna remove everything else. I'm gonna remove the lid and we're gonna take care to, uh, to trim everything that isn't uh, useful, all the plastic. And this little part too, right there. So that's how it's going to look. We're going to use two of them for this belt. Let's screw them together. Okay. Stick them together, right there. Because I'm going to do a big fireplace, so I want two tea lights. Okay, so now I'm taking foam. It's like between 5 and 8 millimeters foam. Quite thick. You're going to see why afterwards. And I'm going to I'm going to remove some space uh, to be able to fit the batteries of the tea lights. It's up to you really to choose the height of your uh, fireplace. Punching some holes for a better fitting. Okay, so now I'm going to cut a bevel in front. There's going to be a roof that is going to be set on top of the fireplace. So now we're going to do the sides, making sure you do the bevel as well. So you see how it's done. You can sculpt it differently. I choose to do something pretty simple. But roughly, it's gonna look like this. Curing the excess. That's nice. So, I can use the first piece to make the second one. You can do so if you want to uh, spare some time. There you go. Using boots of speed. I'm gonna make the stone work, I'm gonna engrave the foam using the X-Acto knife at first. So I really recommend you using a very sharp X-Acto knife, mine is actually a little bit blunt right now, but it works. So I'm gonna engrave it, you know, uh, first horizontally, and then I'm gonna do the separations between the, between the stones. So 
So for the sides, I want something fairly regular. I wanted stone that were nicely cut, but for the central part, I'm gonna go with something a little more natural, a little more uneven. So I'm gonna do both sides. If you've got an empty ballpoint pen, uh, use it to engrave the, the foam. You're gonna widen the, um, the recesses made by the X-Acto knife, and it's gonna give a lot more depth to your stones. For the central part, I take marks from uh, the, the other pieces, just to make sure everything is set correctly. And then I'm gonna go for something a little more natural, a little more chaotic. So, um, the stones aren't all gonna be the same size, uh, but uh, just keep in mind that uh, mostly it has to be horizontal. At some stages, the stones are gonna be lines, but you know, you can go for something very straight, just like the side. I went for something a little more chaotic just to give the impression they took many stones, some of them were reused from other builds, uh, other houses, so some stones were big, those some were little. So I'm still using the ball ballpoint pen technique to engrave it further. I think it looks really nice, a little more chaotic, it's less regular. Now we're gonna use some aluminum foil for texturing. You're gonna make a ball, do not crush it too much, if you crush it too much you won't have any uh, anything to texture. So just, you know, make a ball, but with uh, some edges. And then you're just gonna roll it gently, roll it uh, over the foam. Uh, sometimes uh, you have to pass several times without uh, turning it too much. And you're gonna engrave the foam with, uh, with a texture. So it's a good technique, but the ball will eventually uh, flatten, so you have to do another one. Best to, is to use a concrete to get this effect. A little broken piece of concrete, you'll have the best effect. So now we're gonna do some uh, base coating. We're gonna do a wash with a deep brown. So very, uh, really a wash. We're gonna make sure the paint goes in every recess. So I'm gonna do all the, the parts that way. Don't mind if, uh, if you keep paint in some spaces over the stone it will give good texturing as well. Okay, so we're gonna go for the mid-tones. I'm gonna go with a sort of pink, yellowish ivory. So I'm gonna use some kind of burnt sienna, then add some yellow, then a shitload of white. Once I get the color I like, I'm gonna be able to put it on the craft. There you go. So it's not really dry brushing, but you don't want to put, you definitely don't want to put too much paints. You definitely want to spare the recesses, but you also want to keep a little bit of the texture of the brown uh, that is on the stone. It's like a heavy dry brush. Now we're gonna dry brush with some whites. We can take some ivory. I just went for straight whites but you're really going to dry brush. So don't put too much paint. And you're just going to, to hit the sides, the top of the stones, really only the stuff that sticks out. Now I'm gonna glue the pieces together. Make sure you don't have any uh, hot glue that is visible inside the fireplace. Make sure everything is very flat. Now we're gonna add some glue over the tea lights and we're gonna fix it to the fireplace. Now what I'm doing is cutting some small corners and I'm gonna stick them in the gap right there between uh, the fireplace and the tea lights. I'm just making this to make sure I won't have to use too much acrylic filler. Uh, actually when I filmed it was a silicone but I didn't use silicone. So 
So I'm putting the acrylic filler right in. See, I've used a little cardboard that I've put under the craft because we're gonna have to remove this afterwards. So I'm putting some filler. I'm filling every gap. There you go. Make sure your tools are quite precise. Because you definitely don't want to put some acrylic filler onto that paint you just did. You can use a toothpick. Anything precise that will enable you to put some acrylic filler in the corners. You can also use a precise brush with water to remove uh, some acrylic before it's dry if you have put some on the stones. Here's the result. Okay, so now I'm gonna measure to make the roof. So, I'm gonna use some cardboard. Here you see I used uh, some, some miniature uh, cardboard from Reaper Bones. And I'm going to take another thinner cardboard. I'm gonna do straps. I'm gonna do straps that are about one centimeter large and uh, the width of the fireplace. There you go. I'm gonna cut them and we're gonna make tiles, slate tiles, to match the other uh, fireplace I did. So here you see I'm using these scissors that are often made for children, you know, to make uh, to make crafts. So if you can get a hand on these, they are really useful to make some tiles. But it's definitely gonna take time anyway. So I'm making tiles right there, cutting them, cutting all of them. Now I'm gonna score between each. A tile but I'm not gonna cut it clean I'm gonna score between but just leave a little space that isn't cut just to be able afterwards to uh, do it uh, all together and to make the little roof so it's definitely going to take time you don't have to do this but it's going to take time if you just do it the other ways I just wanted this because I like the slate roofs and every other set I've done is with uh, slated roofs so now we're gonna glue the pieces together on the cardboard Make sure that the cardboard is thin enough, otherwise our craft is going to be very sloppy. Just make sure there's a overhang, that will be pretty good. See, I'm putting the other one on top of the first one, just making sure that the tiles are alternated. There you go, it's finished. So you can leave it flat with some kind of uh, weights upon it if you want. Now we're gonna cure the excess and see how it fits. Okay, let's prime it. I'm gonna use some black. Now I'm just going to do a slight dry brush with another brush that is going to simulate uh, the burning of the, the back of the fireplace. Let's go on the roof to do the highlights. I'm gonna use some silver, very slight dry brush, very horizontal stroke. I just wanted to make sure I hit only the edge, the cut edge of the slates. Okay, let's do a wash. I'm gonna do use dark Prussian blue, very diluted, I'm gonna and we're gonna do a wash on the whole roof. There you go. There you can see the results. And it fits perfectly. Okay, now I'm gonna use foam to make some kind of beam. I'm gonna use this tool to engrave it a little bit further. I'm gonna measure it. There you go. 
You can also use your exacto knife to engrave it. Okay, let's do a wash. Dour brown. Okay, next step we're gonna go for the embers. So I'm gonna take some toothpicks, cut them, and paint them. Always start with the brightest color and then go for the deeper ones. Yellow, orange, red. For the embers, let's use some raw sand. I'm gonna put some glue all around the LED to stick the sand. And then I'm gonna seal it with a little more glue. When it's dry, I can trim the cardboard and the acrylic filler underneath. There you go. You can remove it also from the batteries to make them accessible. I'm trimming everything. Let's start painting the embers yellow, plain yellow. Make sure the yellow is very diluted so it can go between uh, the sand pebbles. Then we're gonna go for orange. So at first we're only going to hit the top of the pebbles with the orange. Then with red. The farthest you go from the fireplace, the darkest you're gonna go. And you can finish by adding some pure black on top of the embers. Now let's do the color on the base. I styled on the mid-tones, then a wash, you can leave it for it to dry, or dry it with a hair dryer. I'm gonna go for another dry brush of the mid-tone, and finally we're gonna go for the highlights. I'm using the same color scheme than uh, for the foam. Look at that texture, it really pops out. We're gonna add a little bit of grey, just on the edges of the fire. We're gonna simulate the ashes. Let's set the logs into the fire. I suggest you start by putting some glue on top of the embers before adding the logs. Otherwise, you see, they're going to move when you try to stick them. And you're going to lose the position on which you set them. So we're going to finish uh, the fire using the small glue gun. You're going to use the nozzle of the glue gun to sculpt a flame out of, uh, of the glue. So you got to keep it warm when you sculpt it but you also want it to, um, to harden pretty quickly. So what you can do is uh, blow on it. You can blow uh, gently on it uh, for it to, um, to cure uh, faster. And you can obtain this way, you can obtain a uh, flame. There you go. I'm quite the perfectionist, so I was really concentrated, so I'm sorry if uh, I'm a little out of focus. So you can use a nozzle to sculpt the, uh, to sculpt the, the glue. Okay, this part is optional, but I like to put some red on top of the flames. For two reasons. First, uh, often the tea light isn't going to be powerful enough to unlight all of the flames you made with the glue gun. So I'm gonna do a color gradient, going from the red of the paint to the yellow of the LED.
Now let's glue in the beam. And finally, we're gluing the roof. You only need to remove the whips of glue. Now I've spent a little more time just to make sure the embers that I've found a little bit too dark to be more bright. So uh, that's it. I hope you like this tutorial. If you want to make the little fireplace I made before, it's really quite the same craft. The only difference is that you're gonna do a round, instead of doing a beam, you're gonna do a rounded piece of foam uh, and engrave it and paint it as if it was a uh, stone. Okay, so that's it for today. Hope you liked the tutorial. If you want to see more videos, like and subscribe. And uh, don't hesitate to give me feedback in the comments. This is Lamvator, signing off.